Good morning, Rad Tech Nation. I'm Ron with the Radiologic Technologist. Uh, another question came across on the YouTube channel, so I'll make a quick video about it. And before I get started, this video is going to be unofficially sponsored by ZipFizz. We all know we need to drink water, and we all know that uh, water has a boring taste. ZipFizz is your daily dose of vitamin C and it tastes great. There's uh, four different flavors. Um, I like the grape and orange. There's a cherry as well and a black cherry. Vitamin C is one of the uh, home remedies being touted uh, as being effective against COVID. Um, it's one of my daily vitamins. I like it because it helps me get some water down and gives me my vitamin C. So I'll put a link down in the description below. If you buy it off Amazon, of course, this channel gets a little bit of affiliate fee from that. It doesn't increase your price at all, but it helps us with the channel. So enough with that. Today's question is from Justin, and he says, what was your motivation in going from x-ray to ultrasound? So that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> initially, uh, I went into x-ray after kind of evaluating the whole landscape. I was in the Phoenix metropolitan area at the time. <clears throat> and I was trying to determine what made the most money for the least amount of school. Kind of doing a, a cost to time ratio, uh, return of income, return on income type of analysis. And I talk about all that in another video, the, the five reasons why I chose a career in radiography. So I'll link to that in the description. That'll explain why I got into radiology as a whole. But once I got into x-ray, um, I was able to evaluate the whole radiology environment, which is a very interesting environment. Um, there are so many doors to so many other opportunities uh, that it, it just fascinated me. So as an x-ray tech, I, I got to have uh, or see firsthand knowledge of sonography and MRI and CAT scan, nuclear medicine, uh, you know, there's DEXA and MAMO and, and interventional and all these different modalities. And I, I would say that I started down the ultrasound thought path um, when I met a traveling echo sonographer. I was working at a small uh, community hospital is no longer in business back in Mesa, Arizona. It was called Mesa General Hospital. And um, they had a traveling echo tech that uh, was a great guy. Um, he explained to me, and, and this is what first got my attention, he would uh, travel on these travel contracts in his um, RV and because the travel agency pays for room and board for travel tax, it was basically paying his RV payment, which I, if I remember right, it was around four or 50 a month or something back then. <clears throat> he had a pretty nice rig. And then he explained to me that they gave him about a $40 a day, I think it was a day, maybe a meal, I don't remember, $40 a day, a meal stipend. Um, so on top of the RV payment and the meal stipend, um, I think he had a miscellaneous expense, uh, but then he also got paid and he got paid way above regular wages because traveling techs don't get the benefits of full-time empl employees. They don't get the health insurance and life and dental and vision and all that. So initially it was the money. I'm not going to lie. I was looking at the money. That's why we all work, right? We don't work because we have nothing else to do. We work because we have bills to pay. <clears throat> so... That caught my attention. So early on, I wanted to be an echo sonographer, and that that goal stayed with me for a long time. And I and I chased that for many years. And over the next couple of years at that same hospital, I met uh, two more echo techs that kind of solidified my thought. Um, and then uh, right around that time, maybe a year or so later, uh, I met another echo tech that was hired to work alongside with me. Uh, and I found out that guy was making about 54 bucks an hour. And that's less than those travelers were making. But uh, $54 an hour to me when I was making 27 to 30 um, was just unreal. To have a job, uh, and not to belittle echo sonographers because they are very skilled and very niche. Um, but to image just one organ and granted there's 
I don't know, 50 or 60 images that you have to obtain in an echogram, an echo, uh, echo, echocardiogram. Um, it's not easy, but it's not that hard to make. $54 an hour, I was, I was in. They had me at hello on that deal. So I was looking at it from the money perspective. I'd already been interested in the healthcare field and solving puzzles was kind of the fascination for me. Not only did you get to solve what the problem was, but you got to help the patient. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. I, I initially started a long time ago in accounting because solving the puzzle in that, in that respect was where, where was the missing revenue? Did your balance sheets equal out? And that to me was a puzzle. But then I, I ended up in a tax accounting class where they kept changing the rules every year and said, this is ridiculous. So anyway, I ended up in healthcare. Um, the other thing that I liked about ultrasound was that it was kind of, I mean, it, it's it's tech dependent in the in the manner that um, once you learn how to do it and read it and know what you're looking at, um, other people that aren't in the field don't have a clue what you're looking at. And uh, that was kind of cool. I, I could be evaluating a gallbladder and, and nobody else in the room would know what I was looking at. Um, Whereas if you know your cross-sectional anatomy, like if you're a CT tech and you look at an MRI, you can pretty much pick out what is what on the anatomy. Um, a lot of things are kind of, uh, they kind of cross into each other. You know, cross-sectional anatomy is very similar in CT and, and MRI. Um, so for, for ultrasound, it's kind of cool when you can evaluate an abdomen or whatever it is you're looking at and uh, nobody else really knows what it is you're looking at. The last thing I'll say about ultrasound, which, which is totally tech dependent, uh, I liked callback because I was after, I was after the money. Um, and callbacks is where you can make some really good money. Uh, callback, if you aren't familiar, when you're not working, you can be placed on call and that means you're you're on standby you can get called at any time and because they know that kind of limits your activities they pay you two or three dollars an hour just to be on call and then if you get called back in to actually do a study you typically get paid time and a half times a minimum of two hours or three hours at regular pay so in ultrasound, if I'm called into the emergency room to do a study that takes 30 minutes, I'm guaranteed two hours at time and a half or three hours of regular time is what it equals. So your return on investment there is pretty significant. And uh, there were not very many nights that I was on call that I didn't get called in. And there were some nights I got 10 callbacks. So, uh, you want to talk about lucrative because ultrasound typically, you know, salaries are all over the place in this country. Um, but you should be in the $30 an hour range, somewhere between 30 and 40. You could be above it. Um, and hopefully you're not below 30, but typically ultrasound lands in the thirties. So, you know, if, if you're at the minimum $30 an hour and you get a call back, that's $45 an hour times two. So that's $90 per call back. And so, you know, round that off at 100, you get five callbacks. You just made $500 in the middle of the night in between your shifts. Now, does it wear you down? Heck yeah. Makes you really tired. But, you know, do you want to do it or not? Um, or take the call on the weekends when you're not in between shifts or, or whatever. I actually triple dipped at one point. I worked for a system in Phoenix that had um, four or five different hospitals, and I had worked at all of them and knew all the ER docs at night. And so I took call at three different ones and, and they were kind of hurting for a call as well. So they didn't mind. Uh, but I would run from hospital to hospital to hospital doing callbacks. And uh, only twice over a year's period that I have two calls at about the same time. So I would just have to call my docs and say, you know, which one do you need right away? And, and they were always flexible. It was never an issue. And the, the best night I had was about 15 callbacks. So ultrasound can be very lucrative and it's a fun, to me it's a fun modality because uh, you see things nobody else can see. Um, I explained it to a patient the other day that, you know, if I'm looking at their gallbladder, I'm looking at the uh, size and shape. I can measure the 
width of the gallbladder wall to see if it's inflamed. I can measure the size of the gallbladder, the common bile duct. I can see stones, whether they're um, calcified or, or soft. Um, whereas other modalities like nuclear medicine looks at the functionality of the gallbladder. They inject CCK, which mimics five Krispy Kreme donuts, which makes your gallbladder constrict to squeeze the bile out and they're checking the ejection fraction. So they're looking at how does it function? I can't do that, but I can look for the things I mentioned. So, you know, each modality kind of has its own play, its own place uh, in the radiology world and does everything just a little bit differently. Um, ultrasound has no radiation. So if you're concerned about that, oftentimes I'll get kidney stone uh, rule outs before they send them to CT, which, you know, I. I don't know, I kind of disagree a little bit with that one because it's really hard to find a stone in a ureter. I can find it in the kidney or in a UVJ behind the bladder or something like that. But uh, anyway, we can argue about what the doctors should order all day long. But um, those are some of the reasons why I chose Echo School. Plus, it, it's a two-year program just like X-Ray, uh, and it was the same cost as X-Ray. If you go to a public school, it should still be between six and $10,000. If you go to a private school, it can go all the way up to 50,000. Um, and now you can go straight into ultrasound uh, without being another tech first. When I went to school and where I was living in the Phoenix market, you had to be another um, ancillary uh, tech. Um, I'm trying to think of the word for it. I can't think of it right now. But you had to either be an x-ray tech or a nurse or a physical therapist or a nuke med tech, because that was separate, um, or there was one other. You had to have one of those licenses to get accepted into ultrasound school, and I was an x-ray tech. So, um, But now you can get straight into it, and you don't have to be an x-ray tech first. From an administrative perspective, you'd like techs that can do more than one modality. I mean, it depends on how busy the department is. If it's a rock and slam department, they're not going to have time to do anything else. But if you're in a critical access hospital or somewhere where it's a little bit slower, it's nice to have techs that are multimodality, and it's just not very often uh, anymore that you find an ultrasound tech that can do x-ray or MRI or CT or something else. Um, but uh, th those are the reasons why I chose ultrasound. I hope it's helpful. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments section. I'm happy to answer them. I've been in x-ray since 2003. That's when I started school. I went through x-ray school, learned CT on the job, uh, started learning it as a student, really, and um, went back to school for ultrasound, learned MRI on the job, got into the RPA program at Weber State, got, a, got about three quarters of the way through that before this little hospital that I'm talking about in uh, Mesa closed. So that was my clinical rotation. So there went that deal. They don't supply you with clinical rotations in the RPA program. Um, and then they closed the program a couple years later. So I really like radiology. Uh, there's a lot of reasons to go into it. And um, thanks for stopping by my channel. See you later. Hey, quick mention, forgot to say, I have a, a blog where I have now over 80 articles or posts that answer a whole bunch of questions in the radiology world. So if you find yourself interested in radiology, check out my blog. I'll post the link in the comment section below. There's actually, I don't know, there's over 80 articles. There's two podcasts that are pretty cool. I interviewed the x-ray tech that lives in Hollywood, and she gave stories about how uh, she x-rayed the rich and famous uh, without giving names, of course. That would be HIPAA, but it was an hour-long interview, lots of fun, lots of stuff over at my, at my blog. Go check it out, The Radiologic technologist.com and I'll zip fizz you later.